Now we're going to make the holes to whoops, uh, be able to sew our spine together because right now we've got a bunch of loose folios and we can't do much with that. So um, some people like to draw lines while they're all stacked together. I don't like to do that because it has a tendency to slip around and I don't like the look on the inside of the pages where there are holes when people go from outside to inside. I like to go from inside to outside because um, I'm going to do a covered spine or it's not going to be an exposed spine binding so you're not going to see it and I think it looks much cleaner on the inside and is less likely to wear if the holes are pointed this way. So how I do that, <clears throat> um, when the finished uh, book is all sewn together and before we put the cover on, um, I always imagine I'm going to take off at least a quarter of an inch around the whole edge of the book so that the pages are nice and even. Um, and so I measure according to this being one quarter of an inch less on each end. So that measurement was um, going to be nine inches. And then I always take off at least three quarters of an inch of the tail and the head end of the book. And those are going to be my starting and ending marks. Now, depending on which binding you're going to do, um, the binding I'm going to do is uh, requ requires, sorry, uh, an even number of stitches, and the math is going to be harder for finding an even number of stitches than it is going to be finding an odd number of stitches. So when you need an odd number of stitches, you find the midpoint in between where you're starting and ending holes, and then you divide them in half again, and then you've got five, or you can repeatedly divide them however many times you need to make however many holes. But Generally, four to five holes is going to be best, depending on the size of the book. If your book is long and skinny, it may need more. Um, to find even number, you find your beginning and end holes, and then you divide it into thirds so that you've got three spaces in between your starting hole and your end hole. And that gives you the marks for your two other holes. So mine was easy. It wasn't an odd number like seven and three sixteenths. It was seven and a half. And so dividing seven and a half by three, that's two and a half inches apart. So that's how much space was in between my holes. And so I've got here an old dental kit. Um, and I don't have a, an ice pick. I call them awls. Um, you can get a tapered awl from Hobby Lobby or Michaels or Joint Fabrics. It's very hard to find a non-tapered awl, but I highly recommend you find one because if you push too hard one way or the other, in or out, you can accidentally make one hole bigger than the other. And um, that can make it so that as you're turning the pages in your book, it can actually cause wear where your stitches are and you don't want that. You want nice uniform holes. You don't want one to be bigger than the other. So. Um, like I said, uh, this is, I mean, I have no idea where this came from. It was given to me as a gift. It's awesome. I love it. I use it for everything. So, uh, what I do is, um, we saw in the, the first video, I didn't completely separate all of the leaves in my folio. So we find the middle, and uh, what that does is keeping the leaves all together keeps the pages from sliding around, essentially. So what I do is um, I found my marks and then I like to cut notches just so I can plainly see it. And what I've used to create the uh, template is Bristol. Uh, I would not recommend using anything much thinner than Bristol. This is a bit too long. Yeah, let me just cut this off with my handy handy. Okay, so I've cut the extra off of my template. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to push the folio and the template all the way against, this is called a cradle. Um, mine is made out of chipboard. You can make yours out of whatever kind of board or anything that is going to, you know, obviously I'm leaning on this. We don't want it to move around. Um, in between the hinge here, that's binder's tape. I wish to pick gray because it was kind of an ugly color. So um, and what that does is you want in between to be soft so that your awl can go all the way through it. Um, and over time, it'll wear out, you know, so many holes pokes it through, it'll probably get ratty and gross. So you want to 
um, replace that over time, but I've had this book for years and I don't do this often enough where it's gonna make much difference. So I'm just gonna go on down the line and poke holes all Okay, and you do that for every single one of your folios and using a template, the lines will match up. Okay.